Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our webinar on Bollinger Bands. Tonight's class is sponsored by CMS Trader, and they're a regulated provider, so I'm required to give you a risk warning before we get started. Trading Forex CFDs and spread bets, a margin carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. You may lose more than your initial deposit and could be required to deposit additional funds. Please ensure you fully understand the risk and take care to manage your exposure at all times. Now, tonight's class is sponsored by CMS Trader, one of the world's leading online brokers. And you can visit them at www.cmstrader.com. And you can open an, a demo account immediately and use their charts to follow along with us tonight. Just go to www.cmstrader.com and click on the buy or the sell button right on the screen, and you'll have to fill in three pieces of information, uh, one of them being your password and the other being your email address, and you will have a demo account open and live, and you can put the Bollinger Bands right on the charts you're looking at from CMS as we talk tonight. Now, CMS is a regulated provider, and they offer great um, online trading with the no downloads required. You have advanced education, you have impeccable service, and you have guaranteed security when trading with CMS Trader. They offer many different trading accounts. They give you free daily signals, un unlimited access to all the platforms, free daily market updates, technical analysis, and they have multilingual customer support agents at your call. Now, they offer a very wide range of trading instruments. You can trade Forex, CFDs for stocks, commodities, and indices with CMS Trader. You can also use their watch, copy, and profit uh, social trading and just follow their best traders on a platform with one click and duplicate their trades if you like. You can also learn how to become an independent trader with their extensive education program. So give CMS Trader a try. So let's get started tonight with our class on Bollinger Bands. Now, Bollinger Bands were created by legendary market manager and researcher John Bollinger. Not so long ago either just in the 1980s. And Bollinger Bands are one of the most popular indicators applied by traders throughout the world in nearly all markets. It's rare today to see a chart not accompanied by Bollinger Bands, and they become a must-have visualization tool which allows traders to see how overbought or oversold a security is. There has been an abundance of information published on how to trade with Bollinger Bands, much of it is through the discretionary in theory, but how to use Bollinger Bands information usually pushes it back to the trader to interpret what the securities price is doing relevant to the bands. Now, before describing the strategies you can use for Bollinger Bands, we have to understand what these bands are and the genius of these bands. And then to a secondary part of Bollinger Bands, which is this, this, the percent B calculation. Now, none of this is very complicated, and all the charting services today will just drop the standard Bollinger Bands on your charts. But Bollinger Bands consists of a simple moving average line and an upper band and a lower band that is calculated using something called, it's a two-day and a 20-day moving average using a standard deviation. Now, Bollinger Bands can be applied in all the financial markets, including equities, forex, commodities, and futures. Bollinger Bands can be used in most time frames from very short-term periods to hourly, daily, weekly, or monthly charts. You put them on the chart you are using to trade from. You don't adjust your strategy to Bollinger Bands. You use Bollinger Bands on the type of trading or the type of the time frame of the charts you're using. Now, Bollinger Bands answers a question. Are prices higher or low on a relative value. By definition, price is high at the upper band and price is lower at the lower band. That bit of information is incredibly valuable. It's even more powerful in combined with other tools such as other indicators for confirmation. Bollinger Bands are a technical analysis tool. Specifically, they are a type of trading band or envelope. Trading bands and envelopes serve the same purpose. They provide relative definitions of highs and lows or market volatility that can be used 
to create rigorous trading approaches and patterns, pattern recognition, and for much and for much more. Bands are usually thought of as employing a measure of central tendency as a base, such as a moving average, whereas envelopes encompass the price structure without a clearly defined central focus. Now, Bollinger Bands are used to measure the highness and the lowness of price relative to previous trades. Bollinger Bands consist of an upper band at a one times of a five period standard deviation of a moving average. And I know there's a word in there that's hard to understand, standard deviation. We're going to come back in a minute and define what standard deviation is. At a lower band, that is one times a five period standard deviation below the moving average. The closer a security is to its lowest level, the more it's oversold. The closer a security is to its upper level, the more it is overbought. Most research and strategy revolving around Bollinger Bands uses this concept and then trend, then tend to add other filters to help this create a strategy. Interesting, in the real world, no statistician would ever calculate standard deviation by hand. The calculations involved are, so, are somewhat complex, and the risk of making a mistake is high. Also, complicated by hand is very, very slow. This is why statisticians rely on spreadsheets and computer programs to crunch their numbers. As the name implies, Bollinger Bands are price channels or bands that are plotted above and below the price. The outer Bollinger Band is based on price volatility, which means that they expand when price fluctuates and trends strongly, and the bands contract during sideways consolidation or low momentum trends. Now, by default, the Bollinger Bands are set at a two standard deviation. However, we suggest setting the Bollinger Bands at a two and a half standard deviation to make them wider and capture most price action. Although, I basically tell all traders, don't adjust from John Bollinger and strategy. Use a 220. Okay. And that is what almost all charting systems will automatically drop on your chart. So before we go over and see how this is done, let's talk about standard deviation because it's something I can't even actually explain to you. I just accept it. Standard deviation is a measure of the dispersion of a set of data from its mean. It is calculated by the square root of variance by determining the variation between each data point relative to the mean. The mean is the average. If the data points are further from the mean, there is a higher deviation within the data set. In finance, standard deviation is a statistical measurement when applied to the annual rate of return of an investment. It sheds light on the historical volatility of that instrument. The greater the standard deviation of security, the greater the variance of each price and the mean, indicating a larger price range. In its simplest form, the mean is simply the average of all data points in a given set. In investing, for example, you might want to know the mean closing price for the last 20 days. And that's why Bollinger Bands use 2 and 20. It's the last, the one band is based on the last two days of, or the last two time frames of price. The other is based on 20 time frames. So it's like using a two-day and a 20-day moving average, but then it's calculated in with the standard deviation, which is a very complex calculation. Because markets are fickle at best, traders and analysts use moving averages to adjust daily to incorporate the most updated data. This means the calculator is always taking into account the most recent sessions movement and the older sessions drop off as they become less relevant. For example, an exponential moving average is calculated by weighing each data point and giving greater significance to the more recent data. Standard deviation is calculated based on the mean. The mean is just the average. The distance from each data point from the mean is squared, summed, and then averaged to find its variance. Or to put it another way, variance is derived by taking the mean of the data points subtracting the mean of each data point individually, squaring each of these results, and then taking another mean of these squares. Standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance. Well, that's a big mouthful. 
But the fact is, we don't need to know all that. Let's go look at some charts and see how this is actually calculated for us. So let me pop up some charts I have ready for us here. Okay, so we're looking, actually, let me take the Bollinger Bands off of here, and we're going to put them on together. Oops. Okay, so we're looking at a standard euro US dollar for one hour. Okay, standard line chart or bar chart. You can use candlestick charts, whatever chart you're using for your trading strategy. Now, because Bollinger Bands are so popular, you just go up here to indicators and you can find them right away or you can go through the search results and find them right away. And we look for Bollinger Bands. Now, Bollinger Bands are already calculated for you. All of the 2 into 20 and, this, and the moving average band are all just dropped on your charts automatically. There's no calculations you need to do. You should understand kind of what they're about, but you don't have to do any mathematical calculations. Okay, now, if you go and click on the properties, you'll see you can colorize them, you can set them up. This is all for you personally, whatever you want to do. But you can see the inputs are based on a 2 and a 20, a 20-day 20 length and a 2 times moving a standard deviation. You shouldn't change these. If you want to use a two and a half, as some traders suggest, you can simply just calculate your standard deviation. But we're going to leave it at 220. So we can see now what we're concerned with is not the – actually, let me fix the colors here for you so you can see them a little bit clearer. Okay, let's change the background here. And – Let's make the bands a little bit thicker so you can see them a little bit easier. And Okay, so we see the upper band, the green band here, and the green band at the bottom. This is called the upper and the lower band. Okay, and then we see a simple moving average, which is simply just averaging out the price for us and giving us a, a big good visual effect of where price is moving. That's all you have to do to put Bollinger Bands on a chart. And because of what charting service you're using or whether you're using the MT4 or MT5 platform, it's the same process. They might look slightly different based on how wide your charts are or the color background you're using, but you just click on the customize and adjust whatever you feel comfortable. You don't have to worry about them. They're all calculated for you. And Bollinger Bands are all about visualization. Okay. And you can see this is the upper, the upper price band is about the upper of the price. The lower price band is about the lower of the price. And the width of the bands contract and, and widen based on the volatility in the marketplace. So they tell you a story when you look at them. Now let's go back to my PowerPoint. And let's talk about what we want to do with these things now that we got them. Okay. Now, so you have, for Bollinger Bands, you have three bands. The base is the middle band. is usually a 20-day base middle band. is usually a 20-period moving average placed on the center of the chart. Your upper band is spread above the moving average by the volatility measure standard deviation. And the lower band is less, the same lower band is the middle of the same volatility. So you have an upper band and a lower band based on the 220 standard deviations. And then you have the center band, which is simply a moving average band based on a 20 time frame, straight, simple moving average. Okay, so let's translate that so that you can understand that it makes a little bit more sense. Now, once you have this information on the chart, 
there are three pieces of information or three pattern recognitions you can use. You're looking for to recognize double tops, double bottoms, head and shoulder patterns. It'll also give you reversal signals, identify early warning signs of reversals, and trend analysis, detecting trend continuation and conclusions. Okay. Now, there are some very simple strategies that we can combine here. But the most important strategy, or the best strategy to use with Bollinger Band is called the percent B. But we're going to look at some little simple interpretations that you can apply very quickly to using Bollinger Bands. And then we're going to go on and learn about the percent B. Okay. Because percent B, which is a percentage of the ball band, is a great trading strategy. But one of the most popular patterns that traders like to use with Bollinger Bands is the identification of M tops or W bottoms. In other words, double tops or double bottoms. Okay. So you can see that. See the pattern on the Bollinger Band here? We see down, up, down, up. This forms what? A W. You can almost see it in the shape of the, of the band. Okay. Typically viewed as a strong reversal signal similar to double bottoms and double tops, the Bollinger Band can be useful in identifying potential entry points for trades and even breakout points. So when we saw the W form, we saw the bottom, the top, the bottom again, we're expecting it to now complete the form of the W. Okay. A bullish bottom pattern is formed by two successful bottom in price action, which form a W. So we have the bullish bottom and the bearish bottom. So the bullish bottom, the bearish bottom was the M. And now we're expecting the bullish bottom, which is a W. Up, down, up, down, in, within the bands. And then we're expecting the markets to move back up. So a bullish bottom pattern is formed by two successful bottoms in price action, which typically resemble a W. Although the first, it will resemble an upside down N, the key lies in the establishing the bullish position near the lower Bollinger Band with a set target on the upper band. Because you see how these also even though you had the, if you had the band off of here, you would still have these double tops and double bottoms. But the rule is they have to be within the band and near the top of each of the bands. Okay. Now, Bollinger Band, okay. Now, however, if price continues to fall, it may be a strong sign to exit and search for a new opportunity. A bearish top pattern is formed by two successful tops. Successive tops in price, which is opposite the W and form an M. So we have the double tops. And we have the double bottoms. Okay, now, Bollinger Bands on their own are not, and, and in most cases, no single indicator works well on its own. We highly recommend combining the Bollinger Band with the RSI indicator. It's a perfect match. There are two types of tops that you need to know about. Okay. After a trend moves, price fall and price fails to reach the outer band as the uptrend becomes weaker. The signal is usually accompanied by an RSI divergence and a continuation signal. During a consolidation, price strikes into the up outer Bollinger Band, which gets rejected immediately, and a reversal signal is in the short direction. Okay, the screenshot, which is very tiny here, I should have made it bigger, I'm sorry about that, shows both scenarios. Okay. So what you're looking for is because price must stay within the bands. So you could notice some of these things without the bands, but it is staying within the bands that gives you more market information. During trends, the moving average holds very accurately. During <clears throat> trends, the moving average holds very accurately, and a break of that moving average is usually a meaningful signal 
that the sentiment has shifted. Now, let's go over and look at the chart. So what we're looking at is this is the U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar, and we can see the price, the trend line moving up, and we have the, move, the simple moving average, the yellow line on here. And what we can see is that price breaks above the moving average at this point, but stays within the band. Again here, price breaks the moving average. You see the convergence between price and the moving average where I, the white X's are. Okay. And then when price falls below that moving average, it reverses from that uptrend and falls down to the lower band okay. and move to a downtrend. Well, Bollinger Bands are exceptionally helpful in determining when an asset has overshot to the upside or the downside. It is important to use the bands to also set risk conditions, not just entry points. A price will most likely move to the top of a band and then fall back to a bottom of a band. So using the tops and the bottoms of bands can help you judge market volatility and to set your stop loss and your take profit points. Additionally, risk and reward should be set based on the width of the bands or volatility of the narrower risk reward during low volatility and wider risk reward during higher volatility. Now, in contrast to other indicators, the Bollinger Bands are not are non-static indicators and they change their shape based on recent price action and accurately measure momentum and volatility. Thus, we can use Bollinger Bands to analyze the strength of trends and get a lot of important information this way. So in other words, we can combine our Bollinger Bands okay, with our trend lines. In this case, I've combined, this is a live chart of the dollar. You can see the Bollinger Bands on the chart you can see the, how the Bollinger Band is moving, the price of the and movement of the price. You can see how the Bollinger Band price moves to the top of the Bollinger Band, comes down. When it breaks out and then moves back in. Now here we can see this whole entire movement of the last day of the dollar within the band, but see how it fell to the bottom of the band, moved back to the top. And the bands are getting narrower, so it means the markets are not volatile. We have our trend line drawn on the chart. Now this trend line became non-existent today because it broke below the trend line, so we would need to move our trend line. This trend line is invalid now. Okay. And we would want to put on a new validated trend line. And actually, we have three points of... So we have... <clears throat> so what we have is the trend line, the bottom of the band, price movement, and then the purple lines are eyeballed support and resistance that were put on this chart about a week ago. And then down below, we also have what's called the percent B, okay, which becomes part of this indicator because Bollinger Bands give you some market information. Okay, They help you determine the volatility as well as possibly where you would want to put your stop loss and your take profit points. Because remember, like I said, price will usually dip to the bottom of the band and then move to the top of the band. Okay. It also helps you locate patterns. So for instance here, could we see the beginnings of an N? Okay. Not really, it didn't form the end. Okay. No, but Somebody asked me, is the percent B similar to stochastic? Got nothing to do with stochastics at all. But if you wait till I get to it, we might explain it to you. Okay. So right now we haven't gotten to the percent B. We're still putting the bands on the charts. So here we might have looked for an M, but it didn't format. Do we see a W here? Okay, because remember they have to say within the bands and move to the top and the bottom of the band to form the double tops and double bottoms. Okay. Nope. Nope. Okay. Nothing. So we have no patterns in here that were tradable, which is fine. Okay. Let's go back to my PowerPoint.
Okay. So what we want to pay attention to, there are a few things you need to pay attention to when it comes to using Bollinger Bands to analyze trend strip. During strong trends, prices stay close to the outer bands. Okay. If price pulls away from the outer band, as the trend continues, it shows fading momentum. Repeated pushes into the outer band that don't actually reach the band show a lack of power. A break of the moving average is often the signal that the trend is ending. So the screenshot here shows that much of... The screenshot here shows that much information shows much information that a trader can be pulling using Bollinger Bands. So we can see five different points on this chart. Okay, now this is combined with using candlesticks, but what we see on this chart is we see a downtrend. So let's look at prices in a strong downtrend and prices stay close to the outer band all of the time. Okay. See how you see price staying close to the outer bands. Look at look at this downtrend here. And you see how price is holding to that bottom band? That's telling you that strong that trend is extremely strong. Here also. Here you see you have a downtrend. Price is not anywhere near the bands. Okay. So that is very important. Here what do we have is we have double tops. Top movement here, down, top movement here. Comes up and touches the upper band, can't break through, can't push it above, and it falls back down. So we have a formation of a pattern. So <clears throat> number one, we have the strong downtown and price stays close to the outer band at all times. Very bearish signal. Price fails to reach the outer band and then shoots up to the ver very strongly and even showing a engulfing pattern in the candles. This is a classic reversal move where the bearish trend is faded. In three, we have three swing highs with lower highs. The first swing high reached the outer band, whereas the followed two failed in the following strength. So we have one, two, and three. Remember what they are. We're going to go back to the chart. So we have one. The band's held close. Two, Bands moved in the middle. Three, we have the double tops. Okay, with lower lows though, because to, to be a double top, it's got to form a lower low, and then come up, and it can't break through those bands. So that's telling us that we should we're going to get weakness or the beginnings of a downtrend. Four, we have it hugging the the outer band. And then in five, we have price consolidate sideways, not reaching the outer band anymore. And the rejection pin bar ended the downtrend. So see how it touched the band and then bounced off of And then the downtrend ended in a consolidation. Never came near the upper or the lower band. So all of this told us a great big story about price movement. So again, one, two, double tops. When you see the double tops, you see it move into the downtrend. Wasn't able to break through, moved into the downtrend. Both of these trends hug the wall, so that tells you they were very strong downtrends. Five, wasn't able to continue that downtrend, broke out of it, and then moved into consolidation period. Okay, now, <clears throat> John Bollinger cre created, first he created Bollinger Bands, and it was just the bands with the moving average. But then soon after, he created Percent B. Now, Percent B is an indicator that depicts where price was in relation to the bands, and then he added bandwidth to depict how wide the bands were as a function of the middle band. For many years, that was the state of art, Bollinger Bands, Percent B, and Bandwidth. Percent B is an indicator for measuring the distance between the Bollinger Bands. Appropriately, this indicator is called Bollinger Bandwidth. 
And so it's simply measuring the width of the bands, okay, from the top of the, or just the band width indicator. It is simply the value of the upper band less the value of the lower band. Understandably, assets with higher prices tend to have higher bandwidth readings than securities with lower prices. If price equals 100 and bandwidth equals 5, then bandwidth would be 5% of the price. If price equals 20 and the bandwidth equals 1, then bandwidth would be 5% of the price. Keep this in mind when using the indicator. In my opinion, the percent %B component of the Bollinger Band allows you to better pinpoint proper entry and exit points. So the percent %B is an indicator derived from Bollinger Bands that quantifies the securities price relative to the upper and the lower bands. Now, let me take a sip of water here. Now, here's the actual calculation. Percent B equals 1 when price is at the upper band. Percent B equals 0 when the price is the lower band. Okay. Now, percent B is above 1 when price is above the upper band. Percent B is at below 0 when it is the lower band. And there's seven parts of this. Percent B is above the 0.50 when price is above the middle band, and percent B is below 50 when the price is below the middle band. Well, forget all that. You don't have to worry about it, okay? Because it's added to our charts. So let's not freak out. You do not have to calculate anything, okay? All the charts will drop percent B on your charts for you. You simply go back to your indicators and you can drop it right on your chart. Percent B is put on the bottom of your chart. Okay. It is not stochastics. It doesn't go inside of stochastic. It's got absolutely nothing to do with stochastic or nothing to do with RSI. Most indicators, which are called bounded indicators, are dropped on your charts below. So if you wanted to add stochastics onto your chart, you would add that and would put it below. You wanted to add RSI, put it below. But they don't overlap each other. You can use them together, okay, not over top of each other. You can, use, you can build a strategy when RSI does that and Bollinger Bands does that. I might buy an asset. But they, too, were not developed having anything to do with each other, and they're not overlaid on top of each other. Okay, now... Let's go back to the live chart, and together we'll just do this. Because percent B just pulls in all the Bollinger Band stuff together and makes it easy to calculate. So what we do, let me get it off the chart. We go to our indicators, and we go over here to our choice of indicators, and we just sim simply collect, click on Bollinger Band's percent B. And it adds it right to the bottom of your chart. If we wanted RSI or stochastics at all, you keep typing it about. We could just go to stochastics. And it drops stochastics on the bottom of our chart, having nothing to do with Bollinger Bands. It's just a, a different indicator. Okay. Now, we have our percent B. Our percent B is the, this line down below. This line is drawn between a 1. It's hard to see on the background of my charts here for you guys to see but it's seen between a 1 and a 0 because the percent B always will come out between those numbers. You saw what they were. Okay, and then here is your, zero, your, your 0.5 line. So you have 0, 0.5, and 1. Okay, the top is at 1, and the very bottom is at 0. But this is the area in which the band is important between the, I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice here, between the <clears throat> 0.5, between the 0 and the 1 are strategical points of this asset, this indicator. And all it's doing is calculating the width of the upper and the lower band and putting this in a, in a numerical value that's easy for you to see and interpret. So you don't have to do any calculations, you have to do anything, it's just dropped on the bottom of your chart. Now, ideally when buying security we would want the percent B reading to be above 
to 0.1 for multiple days. The lower the percent B reading and the more days it is in a row below that reading, the more oversold the security is and the greater historical edges have been. It is key to trading with the Bollinger Bands and by applying a few additional filters, you are then able to build strategies with high average gains per trade and high success rates over the past 11 years. Now, it was 11 years ago, it was almost 12 years ago that Bollinger developed the percent B. He developed the Bollinger Bands in the 1980s and then later he added on the percent B and the strategies were developed. So we have 11 or 12 years of history now on the percent B. When you are trading with Bollinger Band and especially the percent B component of the Bollinger Bands, you want to be as structured and rule-based as possible. So let's look at some of the rules. The rules are generally the same for each market, but you need to set the right levels for that market. There are easy ways to get these in the internet. Now, successful day trading is mostly a game of percent or pennies. The best firms and individual traders who day trade look to scalp for small amounts. Using Bollinger Band and Percent B show that interday edges do exist. The larger day trading firms look at for edges as little as 0.1% up to 0.5% trade. They're only looking to make a wee little movement. They can trade for tiny commission amounts along with receiving rebates. Individual traders need larger edges, and those edges are often more difficult to find over longer periods of time. By using Bollinger Bands, though, we can see that the edges have existed for over a decade. So we want to look at some different strategies. Okay. If the Bollinger, if the percent Bollinger Band reading is above one, if the percent Bollinger Band reading is above 0.75, above 50, or combined with RSI, a two-day RSI above 70, a two-day RSI above 50, or closing price above the five period moving average or the closing price above the three period simple moving average. Because here when we chart them out and look at all the trades that were done with that, we can see where our most successful trades are made with our most pips. A close above a percent B reading of one is still the best performing variation. So when we check using the seven different strategies, okay, we got all of this feedback. And there's a lot of trades. You can see the total amount of trades made, the, the profit and loss percentage, the amount of days each one of the trades were held, the amount of winners that were made, and the exit method that was employed, and which were the most successful. From doing all of the studies, we find that whenever we can enter a market with a close, a close above the percent, the, the percent B, reading above 1.0, it still gives you the best overall success for rate. When you add in other exits, you now see a lot of variations. The robustness has increased and you know you have multiple exit points when you want to exit your position. So by combining with other indicators, you might be careful. By looking at additional exit strategies, the percent B goes up by a healthy amount. We can now see strategy variation percentages increasing the level of success from 77.61 to 82.76%. The average holding period for trades drops significantly because we get in closer to the top and get out closer to the bottom a lot faster. So as you can see, knowing how to exit a Bollinger Band trade is as important as knowing when to enter one. By looking at various price precise exit points, you're able to see more variations with high edges and historically high bounces. Now, successful day trading is mostly the game of pennies. Okay. You want to be systematic. Bollinger Bands, especially the percent B component of a Bollinger Band, have had large qualified edges when you apply them in a systematic manner. They are, there is a preciseness here using Bollinger Bands in this way, using the strategy of preciseness to your advantage. There are literally hundreds of potential variations for you to use from the depth of the percent B level to the number of days below, before that level and above that level. 
one of the most popular ones is called the squeeze. The Bollinger Band squeeze is a straightforward strategy that is relatively simple to implement. This is a good place for you to start with. First, look for securities with narrowing Bollinger Bands and low bandwidth levels. Ideally, bandwidth should never should be the, near the low end of its six-month average. Second, wait for a band break to signal the start of a new move. In other words, when price breaks out of the band. An upside band break is bullish, while a downside bear break is bearish. So in other words, when you have the bands in there, especially if they are narrow, low bandwidth, and you see price break out the upper band, that is a good buy signal. If you see price break out the lower band, okay, when you have a narrow band, that is a very good sell signal. Note that the narrowing bands do not provide any directional clues. Just the narrowness is where the break is. They simply infer that volatility is contracting, and charters should be prepared for a volatile expansion, expansion which means a directional move. So in other words, when we see a band narrow, and we see price break out of the band here. Okay. That's telling us to be prepared for the beginnings of an uptrend. Okay. So we see the price surges above the band, and then that is the beginning. That's telling us the bulls are taking dominance, and they've broken out of that standard deviation, the upper band at this point, and that's telling us the market is about to move upward. Okay. When you combine that with your bandwidth indicator, okay, and you see several days of that bandwidth indicator, and then you see a reversal. It is a good indication of a bearish or, in the reverse, a bullish movement. So the Bollinger Bands Queen, oh, I went backwards. Hold on a second. Let me get my marker off here. So you want to keep your eyes on the bands. When you see the band narrow, you want to wait for a breakout in either direction. So again, as you see, the price broke out here, broke out of the lower band. We have a narrowing band, and then price moved and broke out of the band. Okay. That tells us we're starting a beginning of a downtrend or a bullish, a bearish dominance of the marketplace. Okay. We also see that we had this flat band trading with a 2.5, and all of a sudden, it shot up. Okay. Together, we have very good information. Now, this was not a beautiful downtrend, but it was a very big weakness in the asset. So prices plunged below the lower band. We had narrow bands. Price plunges, and it didn't go into a, a nice moving a down a nice download. It went into a weakness. Okay. Even though uh, let me get my markers off here. Sorry about that. Even though the Bollinger Band squeeze is straightforward, charters should at least combine this strategy with basic chart analysis to confirm signals. For example, a break above resistance can be used to confirm a break above the upper band. Similarly, a break below support can be used to confirm a break below the lower band. Unconfirmed band breaks are subject to failure. So for instance, we're looking here at a chart of Starbucks, and even though we see this breakout here to the lower side, But it didn't break the, the support level, which was on the charts already from support and resistance. So it wasn't a true breakout, or it didn't tell us that it didn't give us a true reversal to a downtrend. Same thing here. You need a confirmation. So in this place, we were looking for it to break the support level, which it wasn't able to do. Here we have the same thing, but here we have the support level here, the resistance level here. Price moved up, touched the resistance, bounced back below the support, stayed within the band, but then finally broke that resistance, that support level, and broke out of the band, 
and continue down to the downside. So you need to build your set of rules, and my set of rules won't fit your set of rules. Okay. But after the surge of above 40, the stock again moved into consolidation phase, which we looked at. Okay. Now, because the Bollinger Band squeeze does not provide any directional clues, chartists must use other aspects of technical analysis to anticipate and confirm the directional break. In addition, to basic chart analysis, chartists can also apply complementary indicators to look for signs of buying and selling pressure within the consolidation. Momentum oscillators and moving averages are of little value during a, cons a consolidation period because these indicators simply flatten along those moving those price actions. Instead, chartists could consider using volume-based indicators such as accumulation distribution or the money flow index or the on balance indicators because volume during a consolidation period volume tends to be flat when you see an increase in volume it's going to tell you that the bulls or the bears are about to make a move so but be careful you want to be, you want to use secondary indicators but you have to be very careful you have to follow your set of rules so in this case we saw price move up, price come out, broke out of the band, broke below resistance, but then went right back into the band and above the support level. But then it finally did break out of the support level and move beautifully into this decline. And I, I don't use this example, use it to chalk in money flow index. I don't use that at all. So I don't even know how to tell you to interpret it. Now, you can see the Bollinger Bands are a multifaceted trading indicator that provide you with lots of information about trends, buy-sell balances, and about potential trend shifts. Together with moving average, and RSI works extremely well with Bollinger Bands, make for a great foundation of a trading strategy. So Bollinger Bands provides you a lot of information. Bollinger Bands is one of the few indicators that actually falls right on your charts. And it's one of the few indicators that tells you or explains the volatility in the markets. But you can use many different interpretations of Bollinger Bands to trade in, in the marketplace. Developing the strategy is for something you have to do. Just adding Bollinger Bands into your trading system might help give you some other entry and exit signals or give you some forewarning. Okay. How you're going to use them into your trading system is up to you. What, what indicators and oscillators you're going to combine them with is up to you based on your trading strategy by your risk management policy, based on the type of assets you're trading in and the type of markets you're trading in. Okay. But these are things you have to build and customize. There is a rule that I can give you. Okay. And I know all of you like to say, Okay, do these five things and then make that trade. Well, the fact is it doesn't work that way. You have to learn each indicator, put it together, test it yourself. Figure out what the rules are by using lots of time testing it and using demo platforms to see how they work. And then build your set of rules. All we can do is point you in the right direction, open your eyes a little bit, and then you have to do the work. Because when you let somebody else do the work, you'll have nothing but failing trades. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you for giving, uh, being part of the Investing.com family. And thank you for giving CMS Trader a try. You can use Bollinger Bands right on their platform, and their charts work very well with Bollinger Bands, and they're very simplistic to set up. Good luck trading out there, and thank you for joining us tonight. Good night now.